In this video, we're going to have a quick look at how to use an instrument rack to accommodate multiple drum racks within Ableton. As I mentioned before, I personally prefer to use my drum pad as a MIDI controller for Ableton, rather than hosting my samples on it. This gives me a couple of advantages. Firstly, Ableton is very quick to set up. Secondly, it's very, very easy to edit, which is great at soundcheck or in rehearsals. Thirdly, it allows me to have multiple outputs that I can send to front of house. And finally, I can use real-time effects like delays that are always going to be in time with the backing track. Assuming we want to use different samples throughout our set, we need multiple drum racks, probably one per song. To accommodate all of them on one track, we need the help of an instrument rack. That's very simple to set up. We want to find the instrument rack in the instrument section and drop it onto an empty MIDI track. Now we can add the first drum rack. On the left panel of the instrument rack, we can find the chain list. Our first drum rack is already showing here, and we can simply drag and drop additional instruments into the rack. Let's quickly set these up a little bit. I'm going to rename the first drum rack to Drums 1, and drag and drop a kick and a snare sample into the rack. The second rack is going to be called Drums 2, and we'll use some different samples in here. Now that the drum racks are ready to go, we need to let Ableton know which drum rack we want to use at which point. For this, we're going to use dummy clips. As you can see, incoming MIDI notes are currently routed to all the instruments on our channel. To separate them from each other, we need to allocate a different chain to each instrument. For this, we want to open the Chain Select Editor. Here we've got a timeline with the numbers 0 to 127, which gives us a possible 128 chains. The blue line is our Chain Select ruler. Whatever number the ruler is set to will be our active chain. At the moment, both of our drum racks are set to chain 0, which is indicated by the little blue zone marker. To separate them, we're going to leave drums 1 on chain 0 and move drums 2 to chain 1. Now, if I move the ruler, we can hear our two drum racks individually. The chain select ruler can either be MIDI mapped to an external controller or automated in a dummy clip, which is the option we're going to look at. For this, we simply add an empty MIDI clip, go to our envelope box, choose the instrument rack, chain selector and pick the chain we want to have selected. In this case, I'm going to go for chain 0 for the first clip and chain 1 for the second clip. Now, depending on what scene I launch, Ableton automatically selects the correct drum rack. Of course, I can also automate the drum racks to change within one MIDI clip. As always with these kinds of automations, I would recommend to turn the loop function off and be very aware of the quantization setting. Playing a note a fraction ahead of the beat might have not given Ableton the chance to change drum racks and might result in a wrong sound. Therefore, I prefer to set this to none. Important to know is that every drum rack can be assigned to multiple chains. We can simply drag out the chain zone and even overlap drum racks, which can be great for layering sounds. Another cool feature in the instrument rack is the velocity zone. This means the velocity of the incoming MIDI note, in this case the power of our drum hit, will determine which drum rack is being used. The velocity zone editor can be found right next to the chain select editor. By default, all instruments cover the full velocity range from 1 to 127. The velocity of the incoming signal is displayed by the little white line above the value. Now if I move these bars, the instrument is only active for incoming signal that falls into its velocity zone. There's another great little feature hidden in here. If I overlap the velocity zones, I can simply drag the white lines at the top to create fades between the two sounds, and thereby make the velocity control more natural.
The same function actually exists in the chain selectors as well and can be a great way to fade between sounds. This works especially well for tuned instruments. And that's it. As usual, if you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below or contact me on my website. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.